Hi, I'm Anna Pitero, and welcome to another episode of About Town, where we feature members of Solano County who are making an impact on our community. Joining me today are two members of our own community right here in Vallejo, the city of Vallejo, Claudette Ramirez and Kathy Farrell, who are co-founders of the Survivor's Story Quilt. Right? Ladies, thank you so much for joining me here on About Town. I'm so glad you're here to tell your stories. Can you tell us a little bit about how the Survivor Story Quilt began? What was the impetus for it? Well, thank you, Anna, mm -hmm. and we really appreciate being able to be here to be able to talk about this mm -hmm. project. It all began, as you had mentioned, um, last fall when uh, Judge Kavanaugh mm -hmm. had been um, nominated right. to become a Supreme Court Justice. Mm -hmm. Well, there was one person who felt that um, the world needed to know about Judge Kavanaugh. Mm -hmm. And this was a, a woman who, when she was much younger, in high school, mm -hmm. had been uh, sexually assaulted by him. Right. And she felt that someone of that character should not become a justice to maintain mm -hmm. that position for the rest of his life. Right. And this was, as you mentioned, Dr. Um, Christine Blasey Ford. Right. And she wrote a letter, she sent it to her congresswoman, mm -hmm. and um, she decided to come forward and tell that story. Mm -hmm. So it was after she testified, mm -hmm. and uh, Judge Kavanaugh also testified, the committee made a decision, and they decided to nominate him to become a Supreme Court judge. Right. I watched this, Claudette watched this, mm -hmm. and we communicated during this time about how appalled we were mm -hmm. that this was going on and that something needed to happen. Mm -hmm. And was it uh, was it Mitch McConnell's letter or oh, comment yes. that so triggered then, this? <laughs> yes. Huh. It, it, exactly. So it was after mm. um, he had been nominated and he was going to be sworn in. Right. A, a journalist was talking to, to, to Mitch McConnell mm -hmm. and said, you know, a lot of people are pretty upset about this mm -hmm. and there's a lot of fury that is going on right. about this. What do you think about this? What, how are you going to handle mm -hmm. this? And McConnell said, oh, don't worry. He said, this fury is just going to blow mm -hmm. right over. Mm -hmm. We don't have to pay attention to exactly. this. Well, it got me, and it got me hard. And I was taking an art class, in mm -hmm. fact, here at Solano Community College, mm -hmm. and in my um, sketchbook mm -hmm. I wrote that a comment to Judge Kavanaugh mm -hmm. or not Judge Kavanaugh Mitch McConnell's oh, right. comment uh, that this will all blow over and I says no it will not right and so what did you do after that I contacted Claudette yeah and we had just met uh, very recently mm -hmm. through an art show that I had put together and Kathy was messaging me uh, and I was messaging back mm -hmm. we were both so upset Mm -hmm. And and it was not just that this person that we felt um, was of questionable character. It was that people were speaking out in disbelief mm -hmm. of of uh, Dr. Ford, who had come forward, and you could clearly see that she was uh, injured and mm -hmm. emotional. And right. it's the worst thing in the world when you have something like this happen mm -hmm. to you to have people say that they don't believe you. Exactly. And, um, you know, I understood why it took her so long to come forward. Mm -hmm. I knew why um, she only t told a few people. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing. And yes. so Kathy said, I feel like I need to do something. And I said, I do too. Yes. And I said, what do you think that's going to look like? Uh -huh. And she said, I'm thinking something like the AIDS quilt. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said... She said, well, I'm not sure what that'll look like. And mm -hmm. I said, I, th I think I know what that's going to look like. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's get together and talk mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. So over a few um, sessions of coffee mm -hmm. and drawing, and uh, we decided that, that we would give people a cloth. Mm -hmm. They could... Um, yeah. A cloth that looks like... Mm, looks like mm -hmm. this. Looks and like we this. have two sizes to right. offer people. We can mail it to you mm -hmm. if you if you uh, need us to do that. Right. But we are also offering workshops because we feel like the community aspect and the support aspect of the mm -hmm. workshop um, is more healing. Right. And we call them workshops, but they've actually turned out to be more like think shops mm -hmm. where people come and just we share information, we support one another, and then they take their cloth and right. go home and mm -hmm. work on it there. 
and so they can tell whatever their story is. Whatever and their and story and is, and it can be written mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. um, handwritten. It can be drawn. You can do a pictorial representation. Mm -hmm. You can write a poem right. that reflects how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. You can paint on it. You can do applique. We have one that has a weaving on it right. because the woman who had this experience uses that to help her heal mm -hmm. and so she wanted to make that part of her story. Right. And people express themselves in so many different ways. Some you people have to took offer the streets, those ways. right? Some mm -hmm. people wrote letters and some people who couldn't write letters wanted to draw pictures, you know, and, and express themselves that way. Yes. How when you thought about doing this, did you send out kits to different people? Or did some people come and ask you, I want to tell my story, how can I do this? And then is that how it started in the art class? Just, just You just had a piece of material and I'm just going to start writing on it? It, it had a started in many different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, one evening we had a workshop at Claudette's home mm -hmm. and we invited some women who we thought might be interested in learning more about this. Mm -hmm. And there were about six women there and four of the women said, we have stories that we would oh. like to share and we would like to be part of the project. Right. And they have created a story cloth. Mm -hmm. Another way is that um, I made a presentation at um, a couple of art classes here at Salama Community mm -hmm. College and I told the students about the project. And every time that I have spoken about this project, mm -hmm. it is a, a powerful experience for me. Yes. Um, I have received um, complete 100% attention of the, the folks that I am talking with and I am describing the project and how it has evolved mm -hmm. and what our hope is that people can share their story and feel empowered mm -hmm. that they are being acknowledged, listened to, and this is not going to be dismissed. Exactly. And every time that I have made this presentation, whatever class that this is at, people come up to me afterwards and um, some are quite emotional and they say, mm -hmm. thank you, I have a story right. that I want to tell mm -hmm. and that this is important and that it needs to be exhibited, it needs to be shown to the public mm -hmm. so that people know about this and Absolutely. they can hear the, our story. Um, and another t way that people can find out about our, our project is through um, our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, an email, friendsofthequilt at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And um, some people feel um, more comfortable in just contacting us that way. Yeah. Um, I meet them at a coffee shop, um, oh, or wonderful. we can mail them um, their uh, story cloth kit. Mm -hmm. And when they are ready, and it is completed, they contact us, and then we arrange to pick it up. Oh, There's wow. no timeline, there is no pressure. Mm -hmm. People need time to be able Absolutely. to sit with their story mm -hmm. and then um, come to an understanding as to how they want to express it. Exactly, because we feel it differently, we express it differently. Absolutely, you were brave enough to tell your story. I read about it in our daily, pa in our local newspaper, The Daily Republic. Yes, yeah. well, uh, we had a very excellent interview with Todd Henson from mm -hmm. The Daily Republic and um, he was really respectful and really interested in our story, in our project. And um, Yes, I, my story started when I was four years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I was molested by uh, an older cousin. Mm -hmm. And then things continued to happen to me throughout my life. Right. And I, you know, some people always ask me, you know, why do you think it happened to you so many times? Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I tell them, I think that it's because th those people who do that are predators. Mm -hmm. You're like a wounded animal and they right. recognize you. Yeah. You know, and until you can gain back your power, mm -hmm. And uh, th they know who you are. They see you mm -hmm. in a room full of people. They can pick you out. Yeah, ninety-three percent of communication is nonverbal. Exactly. Right. And exactly. it could be something as subtle as just a shoulder, you know, or just a flinch. Or, yes. You know? yeah. Yes. And they they recognize you. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to get back to something that Kathy was mm -hmm. saying. Um, every time that she presents, every time that we are together and we present, people come up and ask for a story cloth. People come up and say, I've had a, an experience, mm -hmm. I need to tell my story. And it's not surprising because, uh, w you know, when you start to research this, you realize that rape is the most underreported yes. crime in the world, mm -hmm. not just in the United States. Right. 
And in 2010, the National Center for Victims of Crime put out a report that said one in four uh, children, uh, female children, and one in um, one in six mm -hmm. little boys <laughs> yes. Yes. are victims of um, child sexual abuse. Yeah. And in that same report, they said 20% of grown women and 5 to 10% of grown men. men report that they had a sexual assault experience as a mm -hmm. child. So uh, we're talking about in every, um, every, you know, aspect of right, life really yeah. and as, as people grow it doesn't end in childhood mm -hmm. when you grow up and get a job it can be your boss you go to church mm -hmm. it's your priest it's exactly. you know it, it's just seems mm -hmm. to be everywhere yeah and it's it's just um it's, it's just a tragedy a national tragedy mm -hmm. yeah and just those little percent of those reported Mm -hmm. and, and of the ones that are reported. Happen, That's exactly right. right. Mm -hmm. And what's amazing about your story, Colt, as well, is that it's not only for women, it's for men, too. I think you told oh, a story absolutely. in the book, in your in the article, absolutely. about a young soldier for men too. Yes. who was assaulted by his superior. Mm -hmm. You know, who felt comfortable enough to come out. This person probably wouldn't be comfortable enough to come out to their superiors or somebody else. They could sh share their story on the quilt. And it'll be told. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. And he told Kathy, when he approached Kathy, that he had other friends. That there were there were more men that he knew mm -hmm. that had had the same thing happen to them. So you've had this uh, displayed in different places as well, right? I, I know it's been in the Vallejo t at Times Herald, your local paper, our local paper in the Daily Republic, and you've had one quilt and you've been displaying in, in different places. Where have you had it displayed so far? Um, our our maiden voyage was at a uh, poetry reading. Uh, in Berkeley at the Cafe Layla's, and that's where we first presented mm -hmm. it. And um, we are going to be giving a presentation next week at Cal Maritime, and Excellent. we'll be having the uh, panel on display there. We are looking for more places, more public mm -hmm. places, where we may um, exhibit or install the quilt, and we have an information board along with it Excellent. so that. Um, people can see this mm -hmm. and and then um, be another way to be able to learn about the the project mm -hmm. and uh, maybe choose to participate absolutely and uh, I think local s libraries are doing them as well the libraries are actually taking our information board which has our mission statement mm -hmm. on it and mm -hmm. it also has uh, our contact information so that people can uh, read about it they were a little hesitant to take the quilt itself because it has some very explicit yes. Um, you know, mm -hmm. information, and um, there are children coming in and out of the library, so that's totally understandable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in I other locations that we might, you know, be interested in, mm -hmm. art galleries, right. we will be um, hanging outside the art gallery of Marge. I can't remember her last name now. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's Escapes in me as well. Here in 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 Fairfield at, at, in, in, at Benicia. Uh, in Benicia, oh, in Benicia. she is a member of Arts Benicia, right. and she contacted us mm -hmm. and asked if we would hang our quilt outside of her gallery. Excellent. During we can get her information and put it at the end of the show. Okay, as well. during open studios. <coughs> wow. It's, so yes. it's slowly but surely getting the word out. I think that's so so important. And then you also. We happen to show up at the at the Solano uh, County Board of Supervisors right. meeting, where this month just happens to be Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And that is why yes. we were there. Yeah, yes. and they talked about it, and you got to share your story. Yes, which was amazing because none of them had heard about it. You know, and I exactly, think it's important that it gets the word gets spread out. Our local um, co our local uh, politicians, representatives. I think our state representatives need to know about, it, especially the ones who are representing us, Jim Fraser, or Bill Dodd. They can sell. They can maybe talk about it at the or put it together at the state capitol. Would be a good place to have it out there. And you know, and our local Congress representatives. I think this is a really important story. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, and hopefully Thank we'll get you, the Anna. word out Thank as you. well. I really appreciate that. I we felt really emotional when I first met you because I had written. A, a letter to Christine Blasey Ford telling her that I believe you. Yes. And I can't tell you how many arguments I've had on social media about people who didn't believe, you right. know, didn't believe her. And in this presidential election, you know, you have you know, gentlemen, you know, like Joe Biden, who is being accused of inappropriate behavior. And I think we were talking about this earlier. At our age, we come from the generation where it wasn't uncommon to have somebody whistle at you or pat you on the backside. 
right. you know, mm-hmm. and and we took it because we had we had no choice. That was the world we live in. I think uh, this generation of young women are saying no, and young men are saying this is not okay. Right, right. Uh, we have space, and you can't invade our space. You know, it was I, I exactly thought, I think right. That's important. Mm-hmm. It and is we, very important. Yeah, and I, we, we need to get the word out. And I really appreciate you coming here to tell your story, and hopefully we'll get the word out as well. I would love to have one of those story, story quilts as well to tell a story of what happened to a family member of, of mine. So thank you so much for, sh- for sharing your story with us. You're welcome. Yep. You'll have one for, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Anna. Well, I'd like to leave our show today with a quotation by Madeleine Albright, who was our Secretary of State under Bill Clinton, and she said, it took me a long time to develop my voice, but now that I have it, I'm not going to be silent. Thank you for joining us again today. Welcome to TV 55. In this hands-on class at Solano Community College, you will learn all aspects of television production, how to use high-end cameras, lighting, and audio equipment in the field and right here in the studio. Whether you are looking at making better YouTube videos, educational or promotional segments, or finding your creative passion, enroll today. Get an art school education at the fraction of the cost. Visit us online at solano.edu. College just got affordable. Up to 100% of enrollment fees can be reimbursed for first-time college students taking full-time classes. At Solano Community College, we are taking full advantage of this to further your future. With certificate and degree programs in industrial technology, aeronautics, biotechnology, and many others, Solano Community College is a staple for success. For more information, please contact the Financial Aid Office at 707 864 7000.